All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is another video that uh, shows you some of the basics of Xcode. We will focus on the text fields and the appearance of a button. Okay. Now, this screen is very similar to the previous screens that we had in the previous videos, but the only thing here we have is that we don't have the sliders. We have the labels. We have a label here, and then we have uh, a button. Now, if you don't know how we reached here, you should watch the first two videos and to get you up to speed, then you should be able to get to this point. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Now, if you run this right now, you'll see that you have a rounded button. How did we create this rounded button? Now, you can do this two ways. One, using, one way using the designer. The other one is to use the, uh, some code into the view controller class to make it look rounded, okay? But for now, we have, if you click on the identity inspector here, for you select the button, you click on the identity inspector, you'll notice that you have, uh, I added this thing called runtime att attribute. You double click here and then you type the following, layer.corner radius, and basically you're passing a, a value to this object when it runs. And the, uh, the value we're saying, the layer object, the corner property, radius property, we're setting it to a number. Okay, so the way you do it, just show it quickly. You double click here, you type in layer dot corner uh, radius. You change this to number, and then you give it a value. You double click and you give it a value. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. No need for this. So this is what we've done here. The other part is that you actually can change the background and the text for this button, and you do it by selecting the property inspector or the attribute inspector. And here you have the color of the text. You can change the text of the color. Now I've used this, you can select whatever color you want, let's say orange if you want, or green, so it looks different. And the other thing is that you can change the background for the button, and then this is usually in the view for that button, okay? Uh, a button is actually a subclass of a view. So you can go in here, and then you change the uh, background that you want, okay? So now if you run it, you'll see that it looks different. All right, it doesn't do, uh, okay, it's still connected. If you remember, we had this from last time. I still have the method in the, if you're looking here, it's connected to the uh, view controller method, which is calculate uh, BMI. And then I have the same logic that I, from the, from the previous class, I just copied and pasted in this class, okay? So this is the same that we had before. And we have the variables, defined that from before. The only thing I don't have, I have the IB outlet for the label. I don't have the two IB outlets for the uh, sliders, okay? All right, now let's go back to the storyboard. How do we use text field? Text fields are a little bit more complex objects. If we have here, we have something called, instead of a label or a button, we have a text field. And then we can say text field here, text field here, and you can specify different attributes, okay, for this text field. The first one is that you can make it align center, and then you can change the text if you want. Here is the border style. You can make it rounded, and that's why you see it's rounded. And the important one that we are interested in is these things right here. One of them is the keyboard. The keyboard, of course, the other one you can do capitalization. That means you want it to be, uh, it, every time you type in a, a type of word, it will be capitalized. A sentence will be had entered, start a new sentence, or all characters. Okay. Uh, corrections, autocorrect, spell check as you type, and the keyboard is the default. Now, all these make sense depending on what you're typing, but we're, not, we're typing numbers, so we're not interested in all of, any of these. The keyboard type is what we are interested in here. You can use the default, and this is whatever language you have it's, uh, set on your device will be, will, will be displayed. The ASCII, the number and punctuation, you have the uh, number of punctuation is the you know, numbers and the brackets, the decimal points, and so punctuations, all of that. URL, number pad, phone pad, Name, name, phone, uh, name, uh, 
phone pad, email address, decimal pad. This is the one that we're going to use. Let me just show you quickly. If I select number pad uh, for one, and I'll select something different for the other one. Let's select uh, whatever. Uh, I, this one here. I don't know if they're the same, but let's check. So now when you, when you click on this, we allow the user to enter values. Notice there is no decimal because we just use number pad, okay? If I click on here, I got, I think this is the same you got with the, uh, okay, so you can go switch in this matter, name pad. Okay, the alphabet plus the name, the key, the keyboards. But we have a problem. You cannot hide this keyboard, okay? I'll, the next part, I'll show you how to hide the keyboard. But what we want to do, because we're entering numbers and decimal, we will use decimal pad. And same thing here, decimal pad. Okay. Now, to hide the keyboard, there are several ways to do this. Okay. One is, is more advanced. We use delegates and we tie these to delegates and then we check for the state that we want to monitor for. Okay. And for this step, we're not going to do that. All right. The other part that you can do is uh, you can use. Uh, you can have what we call here. Uh, you make you have a button or something that to hide the keyboard and in the keyboard, or you add on this in the view itself something called a gesture. Okay, you can see in here we have gesture recognizer. One of them is tab. So you drag this and put it in here, and then you connect the gesture to an action. Okay, this. Uh, becomes like a button. So every time you click anywhere on the on the on the screen, then you call that action. The third way is that you can make the view itself act like a button. Right now, this is a view. You notice it's a view, and here in the identity inspector, it, the class for this is UI view. But we can fool it, and then because it's a view, you right click. There is no actions associated with that view. But if I make it as UI control, you can pull it as a control. Watch what happens. Now, if I do this, now I have a method. All the methods that I see for a button are available for me. One of them is touch up inside. Okay, so what do I do with this? What we do, it becomes like a button. Is that let's show the code assistant, hide this. And I can say when I click somewhere here, on this view, which is the touch up inside, drag it and drop it here. And it's an action, the name of this hide keyboard. Okay? And then you hit connect. Now, in addition to this, I need to connect, because I want to get the values from these two, and we're using IB outlet. I need to connect these to here. And then here I'd say, I call it uh, TXT. Which one is this? Uh, this is the weight, okay? Uh, could not insert a new outlet connection, couldn't find information in the claims and label results. Oh, all right, let's try this here, okay. Outlets, TXT. Uh, this is weight, okay, and the other one, TXT height, okay, TXT height, okay, and then we do connect, all right. The reason we did that, because I want to get to these values, all right, and I'll explain how we hide the keyboard in a minute, okay. If you run this, still there, right? But we don't do anything. But to hide the keyboard, I wanted to click here. And at the same time, I don't know where I am. It could be here. This key, I could be, the keyboard could belong to this guy, or the keyboard can belong to this guy here. We don't know that at this level. So what do we do? Let me just make that center too, so they're all the same. Oh, uh, are we in the class? Yeah, text with, yeah. All right. What do we do with this guy? 
if we go back to the the uh, Swift to the class and let's start looking at here. This is the action that hides the keyboard. What I do because I have two text fields, txt height, I can send the command. I don't care if you if the keyboard is for this guy or the other guy. And the command to to hide the keyboard, we call it resign first res uh, responder. What it means that when I'm touching that that uh, text field, it becomes my first responder. Okay, this is uh, what I'm working with on the screen for simplicity. The other one is the txt wait, and then I do the same thing, design first responder. Now, if I run it, all I, if I click on here, click here, it's hidden. Click here, click here, it's hidden. Click anywhere on the screen, it's hidden, okay? So that's how we hide the keyboard, okay? Again, there's several ways to do this, couple ways at least, but this is the easiest way I find for you guys at this level. Okay, we don't have to deal and explain what our delegates for, for uh, are. And then the next part is to get the values. How do we get the values? Now, I already have the code, and I have already initialized those values to this. This is what we had before. Now, what I want to do is that I want to just simply say I want to get the value from those text fields. How do I get these values from this text field? I define vars, okay, string, weight, equal uh, txt weight text okay and then I can say w should equal to str str dot uh, end oh sorry str w dot I should say double value float value but they don't exist they used to exist in X Objective C, but they don't exist here. Can I say end value? No. Can I say two end? Yeah. How about two double? No. Two float? No. Okay. So I have only one method. You can vary it to an integer, but that's not what we want because I want to get the decimal value. So what do we do? What do we do? We need to define this as our old class body, which is an a string. So the value that you have now will be stored in an nstring object. This nstring object has a lot more features than the other one. One of them is double value or float value or integer value. So I have many other options here. And I like this one better, of course. The reason I say that even you type in the wrong values when you say like you type in character it still takes it and then depends on you know like some if you have a mix of characters and uh, text it will take the uh, the numbers okay uh, sorry numbers and text it will take the numbers okay then i do the same thing now be careful here i've already been bitten once today you when you copy make sure you change everything all right I want to get the height and height and here w height and instead of w here it is height that's all everything else the same I uh, yeah everything else the same so this is the code to get the values into if because we're converting it, we're casting it or we're storing it in an unstring object. Okay. If you don't want to do any conversion to double or float, just integer, you can just simply leave it as is. If you want to get, uh, if you just want the text value, again, you don't need this part. All right. But this will get the value into an unstring object, and then we can use the method float or the function float value to give me the float value represented in that text field. The rest is the same from the previous example. Now watch what happens. If we run it, this is my value again for the height. I'm going to put uh, one point because we're using the decimal, 8.5 and my height, my weight, I'm not going to say my weight here, but let's say. 80 kilogram and then you say check 
and then I'm underweight. I don't. I know I'm not underweight, <laughs> so I'm gonna make that instead of eighty, put uh, eighty-five. Say check. Underweight. Oh, there is a problem. Okay, we're getting the wrong message. Okay, why we have a problem? Let's check quickly here. Okay, txt weight, txt height. Uh, float looks okay. Looks okay. Oh, BM, yeah, it looks fine. What's the problem here? I want to show you a trick. We're gonna put this in a debug. Okay, in a debug, when you type in a value, oh, let's say for the weight it's 80, and for the height it's one point, or uh, let's do one point. 85 in meters we should be using it in meters okay 1.85 it's a check it took me to the debug now i can step through make sure that the values are correct am i correct yeah and here you can see the values what is the bmi bmi still uh zero did we calculate it yeah we did calculate it so what's the problem we have float for the height, okay, continue. No, it's okay now, all right? So, remove the debug point, and I am in a normal weight, I wish. So let's put my real weight, which is about 92, and then check, uh, I'm overweight. Little bit, but I'm overweight. All right, that is the, uh, BMI with text fields. Okay, so we've done with the sliders is an easier example. Now we're doing it with the text field. There's a problem here. We need to make them align center. I thought I did that, but you can do that on your own. All right, I'll see you in the next video.